vitamin D hair loss connection, a double-edged sword. So I'm going to talk about the influence of vitamin D on hair loss and hair thinning. Hi, this is me, Sukrut Kambete. I also faced uh, hair loss, hair thinning few years back and I uh, made a lot of changes in my lifestyle and diet and I recovered or started recovering most of my hair. So I'm going to share with you the influence of vitamin D on your hair loss and whether you should supplement with vitamin D or you should not supplement with vitamin D. I'm going to talk about the consequences of it and I'm also going to share the scientific research behind vitamin D and hair thinning with you. So you would know that whether you should supplement or whether you should take it from food and how much you should supplement and what are the consequences or bad or good consequences of supplementing with vitamin D you're going to learn in this video. So I get this question a lot. Does vitamin D deficiency cause hair thinning or not? Well, the answer is yes, because in my experience, whenever I am uh, analyzing the lab reports of the people I work with, almost everyone has low vitamin D level. And those who have uh, their vitamin D levels close to 30 or more than 30 nanogram per milliliter have almost always taken vitamin D injections or supplements. Now, if you visit a doctor, he would just dismiss your concern by saying that oh it is a very common problem in our population and you don't need to worry too much about it and if it is too low let me give you vitamin D injections or supplements but do you know something strange vitamin D deficiency or vitamin D in excess especially in supplement form both can cause hair thinning or can aggravate the hair loss the supplementation of vitamin D might raise your vitamin D in some cases only if you are seriously deficient in vitamin D but in long term synthetic vitamin D supplements can cause serious damage to your body. So why does that happen? Why vitamin D deficiency is not so simple to deal with? Because vitamin D deficiency is the result of several factors going wrong at the same time. If you really go deep into this topic, you will realize that vitamin D is a hormone, not vitamin. And that's why vitamin D deficiency is not so simple to deal with because it is not just vitamin D deficiency, but it is also insufficiency of vitamin A and vitamin K2. There is also insufficiency of magnesium and boron. It also could be impaired function of liver, kidney as well as intestine. Now let's understand how vitamin D is manufactured in our body. Now among the uh, well known forms of vitamin D or vitamin D3, cholecalciferol is found in fish, egg yolks, cheese and is synthesized in the skin of humans and animals and another common form of uh, vitamin D is vitamin D2 ergocalciferol is synthesized by plants such as mushrooms and is the form most often used to fortify foods such as milk we make vitamin D in our skin when we get in the sun and more precisely when our skin is exposed to ultraviolet B radiation now the initial form of vitamin D called 7-D-hydrocholesterol then travels to liver and it is converted into another slightly more active form of vitamin D called 25-hydroxyvitamin D and this is the form most doctors test when looking for a deficiency but that is not something they should test we will go into the details very soon so when vitamin D the 25 25 hydroxy vitamin D leaves the liver, it travels to kidney where it is converted once more to highly metabolically active form of vitamin D called calcitrol or 125 dihydroxy vitamin D. The active vitamin D then gets transported to any cells, tissues and organs in need, influencing gene expression, immune function, calcium uptake, etc. etc. Now if you know vitamin D 
at each step of the way is dependent on magnesium each step is magnesium dependent so vitamin d is not just vitamin d deficiency but it is also deficiency of magnesium which is very common in normal population and that's why if you get more of vitamin d in supplemental form it is going to cause more harm to your body in the long term so in order to assess the real vitamin d status in your body you need to know your magnesium rbc level not magnesium serum because magnesium is present inside the cell you also need to know the 25 hydroxy vitamin d you also need to know 125 dihydroxy vitamin d and you also need to know the ionized serum calcium level to truly assess the vitamin d levels in your body now unless you know these things it is not a wise idea to take vitamin d supplements because what are the problems with taking isolated forms of vitamin d it actually mobilizes calcium from bones causing hypercalcemia kidney failure depression heart failure it also causes renal renal potassium wasting means potassium wasting from kidneys it also causes depletion of vitamin a retinol from liver now uh, i've been talking to a lot of people who have been or who have taken vitamin d supplements and some of these people have reported symptoms or the occurrences of kidney stones after a couple of years now if you take supplemental d these are these are the few consequences which can happen now when we have low vitamin d in blood test it is actually telling us that there is too much calcium in the blood and not enough magnesium to transform vitamin d storage into active vitamin d form so when you take supplemental d it initiates the inflammatory cascade in your body it causes calcium and sodium to enter the cell throwing potassium and magnesium out of the cell in turn it will negatively affect the production of ceruloplasmin which is uh, the vitamin e de a dependent protein in the liver it also has serves as or it is it also has the antioxidant functions it is a very important enzyme or protein in the body so when we take supplemental vitamin d it causes depletion of vitamin a and ceruloplasmin in the liver and ceruloplasmin is a copper dependent protein which actually controls the iron in the in in the body so ceruloplasmin's job or copper's job in the body to sequester iron from the tissue so that it will not accumulate in the tissues and when the ceruloplasmin levels are affected it causes tissue iron or unbound iron in our body to increase and it also causes problems with enzymes like cytochrome c oxidase glutathione so superoxide dismutase and catalase and other antioxidant enzymes and this metabolic derangement causes arterial calcification and fibrosis by iron laden macrophages initiating the inflammatory response it activates interleukin 6 it acts activates acid phosphatase enzyme which causes calcium loss from bones it activates mcp1 causing fibrosis and calcification of soft tissues it also activates lipid peroxidation and build up of intracellular calcium so in short supplemental vitamin d increases the intracellular calcium increases intracellular magnesium decreases vitamin a decreases ceruloplasmin decreases activation of antioxidant enzymes decreases unbound or tissue iron increases inflammatory response increases and it also increases the production of all the inflammatory markers in the body it causes soft tissue calcification and fibrosis and eventually it leads to hair loss and hair thinning now i also experimented with mega dosing of vitamin d because i also believe that vitamin d is going to help me with my hair loss or reversing my hair loss So in 2017 March I started taking vitamin D supplements because I came across a substantial research about vitamin D and pattern hair loss connection. 
They used to take anywhere from 3000 to 5000 IUs of vitamin D in a day. While I didn't experience any particular benefits with my hair thinning, but within few weeks, I started experiencing more and more fatigue in my legs and I started having or experiencing back pain because excess of supplemental vitamin D depletes magnesium. After a few weeks, I wasn't able to see things in dim light. It also compromised my ability to work without switching on light, even in a daylight, because excess of vitamin D depletes liver retinol or vitamin E. After two months, I came across various other research talking about dangers of supplemental vitamin D and my symptoms sounded very familiar. I immediately stopped taking vitamin D supplements and within a few weeks, my fatigue, back pain and eyesight issues were gone completely. Now, uh, I learned more about uh, the dangers of vitamin D uh, from one of my mentors called Morley Robbins. You can refer to his website, gotmag.org. So the obvious question uh, which comes is why does vitamin D from sunlight doesn't cause any kind of toxicity? So when exposed to sunshine, our skin synthesizes vitamin D3 sulfate uh, by combining it with cholesterol uh, or in the presence of cholesterol. This form of vitamin D is water soluble unlike oral vitamin D supplements which are fat soluble and they are unsulfated. The water soluble form can travel freely in your bloodstream but the unsulfated form needs LDL as a transport vehicle. So the oral non-sulfated form of vitamin D might not provide all the same benefits because it cannot be converted to vitamin D sulfate. So you cannot overdose when getting your vitamin D from sun exposure as your body has the ability to self-regulate and only make what it needs. In short, vitamin D produced from sunlight won't cause toxicity. Now how to deal with vitamin D deficiency without causing any of these issues? Get enough vitamin D from sunlight. So if you don't know what kind of, how much time you need sun exposure or when you should go out in sun, you have to use D-Minder app. It will tell you exactly where, based on where you are living. Uh, it will tell you for how long and when you should get sun exposure. Get vitamin D from fatty fish, eggs, cod liver and other natural sources, animal sources. Get sufficient vitamin A and K2 from food, not from supplements. Get more magnesium and boron from supplementation and foods. Fix your gastrointestinal liver and kidney issue by working on improving your celluloplasmin and getting rid of excess unbound or tissue iron. Now, if you want to know or if you want to read my entire journey of recovering hair along with photos, you can check this link regrowyourhairnaturally.com slash reverse. If you want me to help you to reverse your hair loss or hair thinning, you can take my help. But let's first see what kind of results other people have achieved with my help. Now, this is a three month transformation. The length of hair is same in these two photos. This is a transformation again in um, three, three months, crown area recovered. Again, this is a transformation in 45 days. The person has little bit improvement in his hairline in a matter of month. Again, 15 days transformation in crown area. This is three months after addressing nutrient deficiencies. Again, uh, effect of diet change, massage, essential oils. If you want me to help you to stop your hair loss and help you regrow your hair naturally, I have actually developed a five-step program called Hair Regrowth Blueprint. Check this link, regrowyourhairnaturally.com slash regrow hair. 